Well, thank you all for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, today's workshop is How Dramatic is Your Classroom for Dramatic Play. I am Nancy Duran. And we'll be presenting with Ricky. I want to go to the next slide. Yes. So introductions, I'll go ahead and start about my um, and share who I am. Um, uh, I am Nancy Duran. I am a uh, educator. I work at the East LA College Child Development Center. I am also a uh, Child Development Center adjunct instructor at the East LA College. I've been in the early childhood field for about 17 years and being in the classroom setting and being as well uh, as an instructor is really important to put into practice what we lecture curriculum theory, right, in our classroom setting. And as um, we've been, you know, part of, part of the field in early childhood, you know, this, this topic dramatically is very important uh, to highlight. Um, so welcome all. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rokia Rahman, and I am also an associate professor, a faculty member here at ILAC Child Development uh, Department. Our department basically child family and education studies and our discipline is child development. And I used to work with young children and their family more than uh, 15 years. And I was a teacher, uh, assistant teacher basically. I started my journey um, as an assistant teacher, then teacher, side program supervisor. I was an instructional coach. And also I was um, adjunct professor at Los Angeles City College and also ELAC. And now I'm working full time here at ELAC is Los Angeles College. It's been five years. So uh, and one thing I really love about this topic today, uh, this is something that I adhere so much. And I feel the dramatic play is a natural adventure for young children. And sometimes we might do not support them as much as we need it. So that's why me and Nancy, we choose this topic. Hopefully, you know, we'll explore some of the ideas and how we can support them. So thank you for joining. So before we move on, uh, I would like to do an icebreaker activity. So I'm going to share. Yeah, I'm going to share the link with you. Just give me a second. I have to copy this link. I forgot to copy it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to um, share a link in the chat box. Uh, you can feel free to log in. Uh, you can actually uh, go log in that link. And in that link, we're going to take you to a Jamboard. So you can share basically, how did you play when you're young? What kind of role um, did you take when uh, you play as a child? Uh, what did you play? Who did you play with? What materials you used? So you can maybe share some of your experience. And you can, you can go to the Jamboard or you can actually share in the chat box, it's up to you. So I will actually, uh, let me bring the jam board so you can kind of see how you're going to share. Let me just uh, bring my jam board right now and also share so you can log in. Here we go. Here we go. So you can actually log in to the jam board uh, using the link that I share. You can use the link that I share in the chat box. Are you able to join? I see, uh, yeah, I saw that some of you actually joined. So I think it's really, you can actually click on the sticky notes right here and then you can type and you can actually save. So that will help you to put some of the ideas. And once you click on the ideas, uh, every, every, it's gonna be to build a community. All that your ideas are going to be uh, showing up just here. Thank you. Yes.
Okay, I saw that. I wanted to read some of uh, some of the ideas that you shared. Uh, one one of you shared. I often time played school by myself. I used paper, pencils, whiteboard, anything I could get my hands on. My my students were often light bright pieces uh, or Barbies. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, I saw that uh, one of you said I. I played house when we were young. I played with neighbors and close friends. We used anything we could find to be our home. I know, absolutely. Those are actually sweet memories, so much sweet memory. I can, I can you know, definitely remember the way I used to play with my siblings, especially. I want to be said, I played with two of, two of my sisters. We would have singing competition. <laughs> So wonderful, so sweet. I played by myself with my animal figures. I use recycled boxes as houses. Isn't it so creative? Think about like children, they don't need anything. As long as they have some empty boxes or pillows or some blocks, you know. Thank you so much for sharing. Also, uh, some of you, uh, one of you shared, I dug with branches, popsicle sticks, and shovels in the sand pit and mud looking for fossils. Wonderful, wonderful. I played by myself, okay, that I read already. I played house, school, store with my sisters, brothers, and neighbors, neighborhood apartment complex. <laughs> I used to play restaurant with my cousins. We would transform my rooms into a restaurant by using tables and stuffed animals. Thank you for sharing. Those are, I, I would say, these are, you know, dramatic plays basically is natural instinct for young children. It's actually natural avenue. Every child go through that stage. Some children might need a little bit more time, but every children actually go to, every child go to that stage and experience uh, this uh, creative um, exploration. Okay, I'm, a, I'm also going to share um, what they've shared on the chat box. So I yes, have Ale please. Alejandra shared uh, she played doctor and chef. <laughs> Maggie shared uh, she played doctor and, and patient. Um, Carol said she played alone with her dolls and she was the mommy as well. Um, I used to play grocery stores with my siblings. And what else have they shared? Um, I will make clothes for my dolls. Oops, I lost it. I'm going to clothes for my dolls with extra materials and I will leave them when she will make clothes. So she had extra materials and you'll make clothes. Perfect. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing. Um, wonderful, wonderful. I see. I want to read uh, two more, maybe. Um, uh, one of you said, I would always play teacher and pretend that my toys were my students. That is also how I got my homework done. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I used to do the same. Te being a teacher is it was my favorite things to do, and all the stuffed animals and and small plants are my students. <laughs> Another um, participants you shared. I played hide and seek with my classmates. We would hide behind trees and take turn being the seeker and finder. Of absolutely. And also another one. I used to play with GI Joe's outdoors and recreate the battles shown in the TV show. So many of you actually shared, uh, are not able to read all of them. Maybe you were able to read some of the, some of the, some of the sharing um, stories here. Uh, it, it's really wonderful to know, you know, how young children get involved in creative play. And it's our beyond our imagination, how much creativity they have, how much. It, it's amazing. Uh, I feel so, when I watch children uh, playing, I actually feel, I feel so happy <laughs> to watch them, the way they are creating everything. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing this screen and then uh, I am going back to my PowerPoint. Thank you so much for sharing. It's wonderful to know. Uh, let me go back to my screen share, my PowerPoint. And as you're going back to the park, when I just want to share as well as me growing up, my engagement was also being a teacher. I had my, my siblings and I had my stuffed animals, you know, available. And it does impact how the play impacts a role 
in our lives. And here I am being a teacher, which was, uh, which was like great, great pay and a great accomplishment I made in life. Absolutely. So again, thank you for uh, thank you so much for sharing. So I'm going to move on, uh, and Nancy will uh, lead the discussion. Nancy. Yes. Yeah, so uh, again, thank you for joining us this evening, and for, we're going to go and review uh, the workshop's objectives. So for today's objectives, we're uh, we're going to be defining dramatic play in the key terms, the importance of it, identifying the development stages of dramatic play. Will be acknowledge uh, the benefits of dramatic play as well, under as well as developing and understanding the perspective of dramatic play. Identify the link between dramatic play, California Learning Foundations, and the DRG piece. Assess your classroom dramatic play environment, and receive several effective ideas to create and support children's dramatic play within your classroom setting. So here, what is dramatic play? I know we shared what we have engaged, but when the term dramatic play comes comes to you, what, um, and feel free to please uh, either unmute and share, uh, or uh, you could add it in the chat box, but, right? What is dramatic play? Or when you see this image in front of you, right? Which is a dramatic play outcome, concept, right? What is dramatic play? Maria? Yes, I will say, uh... Pretend I seen, like maybe pretend to be a doctor, pretend to be a teacher, pretend to be um, any, any, anything, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, to pretend to be anything like playing a house, a teacher in a classroom, a doctor in an office. Yes. So, et cetera. <laughs> yes, yes. And exactly what you're sharing, uh, Maria, they're uh, also adding that in the in the chat, right? So dramatic play, right? It's a, it's a typical and creative, spontaneous play in which children use their imagination to create a drama, dra, dra, <laughs> drama, dramatize, uh, pretend character, acting, and event. So the dramatic play aspect of it, just like you shared, and I see um, participants are sharing that as well in, in our uh, chat box. Uh, and social dramatic play. Uh, it highlights the level of symbolic play in which young children create their own happening based on their life experiences, right? So just, uh, Maria, like you shared and the participant uh, pretending, um, engaging in uh, numerous um, uh, acts of play. And the terms used for dramatic play, there's a num numerous uh, use. So one is imaginative play, Make believe, and I see those were some of the um, uh, information that was shared in the chat. Pretend play, as well as symbolic play, social dramatic play, and fantasy play. So these are the terms used. What are the two types of dramatic play? So now we know the terms and we talked about dramatic play. There are two types of dramatic play. Does anybody know which two? Our dramatic play. Feel free to share and unmute or add it in our chat box. Nancy, can I add one thing about, about dramatic play? Yes. I, I just wanted to piggyback with what Nancy said. Uh, dramatic play and social dramatic play, a slight difference between these two kinds. Dramatic play could be one child playing by, by him or herself pretending someone, right? When it comes to social dramatic play, basically it's include other children. So they engage with, uh, you know, more than two children. And also they engage a little bit longer time to play, create a scenario, make some of the role. And also they do follow some rules. So basically it's a little bit more complex. It's more advanced and also uh, take a little bit more time. So I just wanted to uh, clarify uh, that. Thank you. So there are two types of dramatic play, um, structure play. So this structure play is more as a, a desired outcome, right? A parent or facilitator will have um, set up an environment with intentionality so the child could come and engage within the play. As you see in this image, right? Feel free to share. Well, what do we see? What do you think is happening in this picture?
There's a child lying down, there are other children hospital, right? They're helping, you can see they're, they're facilitating uh, the patient, right? Just lying down and we have a um, plain doctor. Yeah, so this environment, this environment was you know, set up with that intentionality for um, the children to come and engage. But that's the structure play. And that unstructured play, so when children come and they use the materials they have around them, and create yet their own. For example, they use um, a, a block as a cell phone, right? If they use a couch as a, as a bus, as a ship, right? It's un which is uh, a unstructured, uh, unstructured uh, play. Okay. Uh Thank you, Nancy. So I'm going to focus on some of the stages of dramatic play or pretend play. So as you know, that developmental uh, level actually different based on the ages and stages of development, right? Because every development we see does have a progression. Every child has to go through different stages. So um, same way, dramatic play development also has different stages. These are the three stages of development of dramatic play. Stage one, basically imitative role play. In that stage, this stage actually began as early as one year old. You can see young uh, one year old uh, toddler, they're actually walking and talking like mommy, or maybe trying to put daddy's shoes or you know, pretend to feeding a baby. So they are basically imitating uh, the actions, imitating the way people talk or dress, or uh, maybe do some sort of action. Uh, the people who actually close to them, maybe mom and dad, they imitate mom or dad, or maybe closest caregiver. So as you see in the picture, like you see a child maybe talking uh, on the phone like mommy. So that's basically first stage. And in that stage, child actually do it by his own, okay, his or her own. And the second stage starting a little bit in you know, older kids is actually make believe play. In that stage, uh, materials or props doesn't matter they can basically use anything they have around the household and uh, you know, think about creating something else with this. For example, if you think about Vygotsky's, um, not Vygotsky, Piaget's symbolic play, right? So for example, let's say if they have a piece of block, they can pretend uh, as a cell phone or maybe a pillow could be the horses or car, right? For example, like we said, stuffed animal could be the students so that basically make believe play where uh, you know imagination become more enriched and they become more creative and also you know they engaged in uh, in so much of group you know representation uh, using one thing to something else. So that basically that make believe stage and this is stage number two, and stage number three here we come socio dramatic play. So when they engage with other children, so basically. Uh, ch children starting at age three to four, they are actually looking for partner to play with. So they're looking for peers. So basically we'll see that in that stage, children actually engage with two or more than uh, uh, children, two or more, more children, and they actually created a scenario. For example, maybe they're having a birthday party and they also assign some of the role uh, you are you are mommy, you are daddy, you are the baby, or I'm the puppy, I'm the doctor. So they basically come up with their whole storyline, and they have different role, and also they have to follow different rules. So that's why this kind of this stage, children actually take a little bit more time to be engaged. I wanted to share one of the experience. I used to be a Head Start teacher for for many years. So one time, uh, my student, I saw that a group of children. They are playing the same thing every day. I was like wondering what's going on. And I, I love to watch actually make believe play. So I saw that children actually line up their chairs and having the baby doll. And they are like putting chairs like a classroom row. So I was wondering because they used to speak Spanish and I don't really understand the whole conversation. So I was very curious. So I actually asked my assistant who used to speak Spanish. So I asked her like, what's going on? I saw this group of children uh, it was actually more of the girls and also I think about two boys. So it's like five, six children. So I said, what's going on? They have been playing the scene for, you know, last three, four days. And then she, she actually watching them and she said, oh, Miss Rokia, 
they are actually baptizing their baby in the charge setting. I was like, oh my God, really? I was like, I was like laughing. We're like, oh my goodness, look at them. You know, how creative they have rose, they have babies and they are, you know, baptizing. They're actually imitating the whole process. And they actually divided different, different role to different children, you know, who's going to be the mother who's holding the baby and who's, you know, um, the uh, priest who's actually helping them to baptizing their babies. I was so amazed to watch them. So that basically part stays sociodramatic way when they're engaging with other children. And I, I know that definitely those of you are working and also supervising children, you can actually by observing them, you can understand what stage they are in. So it's so fascinating to see and also as, a, as an educator, we need to give them the opportunity so they can go to the next level. So that basically our responsibility. So before we move on to um, a breakout room, we do have a breakout session, but uh, I'd like to kind of piggyback on the research, on the theories, how theories actually define and what theories say about a dramatic play. So basically um, everybody know Piaget, right? Piaget and also Smolansky, both of them uh, focused on actually cognitive stages of dramatic play. How children improving their cognitive development, their thinking process when engaging in dramatic play. So Piaget basically talked about three kinds, uh, practice play, symbolic or dramatic play and games and rules. And Smolansky, actually Sarah Mal Smolansky, she actually talked about four kinds of uh, dramatic, socio-dramatic play. She actually defined socio-dramatic play, that's basically her term that she used. So she said functional play, constructive play, dramatic play, and games and rules. So summarizing both idea, we can say there are three, uh, you know, cognitive play stages in dramatic play. Number one, practice or functional play. Basically, that started during infancy to three, two years old. So in this stage, actually children explore using their, uh, using their senses. So they explore different objects using their five senses, their motor practices. So they actually practice their motor skills by exploring, holding or throwing or grabbing, putting them together, different materials. So that's how they explore. Uh, that's basically called practice and functional play. And number two, symbolic play that we are actually discussing right now. So uh, Smolansky actually defined as a constructive play uh, and, uh, and symbolic play actually defined by Piaget and also Smolansky mentioned about dramatic and socio-dramatic play. So in that stage, basically they actually dramatize different actions and incidents and, and event. And also they create, they make up their own scenario. They actually come up with their own storyline and own character and own responsibilities. So these are basically symbolic play. And the last one is games and rules, uh, basically a little bit older children, school-age children, seven to 11 years of age. So what happened in that age, they come up with their own game. It could be it could be board game, it could be a dramatic play, a more complex and extended play. So they come up with their own games and own um, rules and also own expectations. So these are, uh, you know, some of the cognitive stages of dramatic play, according to Piaget and Smolansky. Besides them, interestingly, Vygotsky, and we know that Vygotsky actually emphasized on interaction, right? So social interaction, interaction with environment is so important, according to Vygotsky's theory. So Vygotsky and Elkonen, they actually uh, came up with stages of make-believe uh, play. So stage number one is level, level number one, basically object center. So children actually, they just engage uh, using toys and using play, maybe for example, as you see, maybe watching baby dolls, but they don't really come up with the name. So they don't really have the name of the role. They just engaged in, that's very young children. And then level two, roles are named once they play begins. So that means as soon as they engage, they can come up, okay, I'm the baby or I'm the mommy or this is, I, I'm a doctor. So that comes after they engaged in dramatic play. And level three, basically they uh, name their role before they play begin. For example, they can say, we're going to have a birthday party and I'm the birthday girl. Or they might say, you know, we're going to doctor's office and I'm the doctor, your mommy and your baby is sick. So they actually come up with the name 
before they begin their dramatic play situation or scenario. And level number four is more well-defined and more complex and older children actually in that level, what happened, uh, roles are well-defined and fully developed on mature play. That means they come up with a whole storyline that today, uh, you know, we're going to play Power Ranger and you are uh, the pink one or, or today we're having a, um, you know, special birthday party. This is what's going to happen and you are going to do this. So they will be actually defining um, and come up with the whole uh, event and distribute different different role and come up with different rules and stuff. So that's basically level number four. It's more well-defined characters and also scenario and everything, the storyline and more mature play. Anybody has any questions so far? Let us know if you have any question, you can actually uh, you know, raise your hands, virtual hands, or you can put in the chat box, okay? And let us know if we're going too fast or too slow. Okay, so um, we're going to share a video. So Nancy, you would like to cover that part? So um, we're going to cover the importance of pretend play. So um, after we watch this video, we're gonna go in, in a breakout rooms and we're gonna share. So as you're um, observing the video, um, what are the benefits of dramatic play and what could be a teacher's role in supporting the dramatic play? So be sure we capture these um, observations within this um, short um, video clip. Put the audio. All right, it doesn't have the audio. Can you? Thank you for your thank you for your patience. Let's. Does it have the audio? Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> Pretend play is one of the forms of play that children um, demonstrate. And the hallmarks of pretend play generally are that children are engaged in make believe activity. And the make-believe activity can be fairly simple as pretending to drink tea from a pretend. What happened? Sorry. Toy cup or more complex to taking on a role, say baby in a pretend family situation where there's also a mama and a dada playing and maybe even a grandpa and grandma playing along in a family situation. It's interesting because it's thought that starting about the 1950s, where we see more and more toys being marketed to children, that in fact, that sometimes those toys can limit children's play. Because if you take an object like a toy, um, it can often dictate how the child plays with it. But if the child is given more simple, open-ended objects, then the child has to use their imagination to decide how to use that object. Current researchers are talking about the fact that parents or teachers don't need to buy expensive toys for children, that the best types of objects to supply to children to encourage their pretend play are open-ended objects like blocks, crayons, paper, clay, all those open-ended materials that are kind of the foundation of good early childhood classrooms. That you don't want a lot of commercial products because um, like I said, it tends to limit children's play. Whereas an open-ended product like a block, uh, a good set of blocks, children can play with that in a different way every day of their life. Whoa, it looks like we've got it. Oh, wait, let me see. I'm going to go water. Oh, let's go with the water. Oh, 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 o
pretend play is voluntary and it's chosen by the player and the player drives it. So if the adult, if the teacher or parent imposes it on children, it's not nearly as effective. And in fact, a big worry we have in today's world because so much of children's time is scheduled and so many of their play objects draw for one type of play and they're so supervised all the time that it's thought that children aren't getting the chance to use their imagination and engage in pretend play at the levels that are really needed for good development. It's very important that the adult facilitates play but does not dominate the play. And so that's a, that's a fine divide that teachers and parents really need to learn how to negotiate. You wanna support the play, encourage the play, and if children kind of get stuck, you want to help them get unstuck and take the next step, but you don't want to direct it. A good early childhood classroom would incorporate a variety of um, interest centers for children to explore. So for instance, any early childhood classroom is usually organized into a number of centers. Um, there's almost always a block center, almost always a small manipulative center where there are Legos and other small blocks for children to use. There's almost always a reading center, a group gathering center, a literacy area, maybe a science center, and maybe a sand and water table. And so those areas are purposefully there to encourage different types of exploration or opportunities for the children to learn. From a parent's point of view, I think when you visit an early childhood classroom, you should ask the teacher how much time um, the children have to play each day and how those play activities are supervised and organized because um, you would wanna look for an environment where the children do have free play opportunities and if the environment is rich to support that in terms of having open-ended activities for them to choose from. Where kind of the rubber often hits the road is when we talk about academic and pre-academic skills and the role of play in, in facilitating um, good academic achievement. There's a, there's a number of research studies in literacy, language development, math and science and reading that shows that children who went to preschools where there were large segments of time devoted to rich pretend play, that those children achieved quite well in those areas. And in fact, there's a growing body of research that shows that pretend play is correlated with something called effortful control, which is um, impulse control. And that is actually more predictive of school success than IQ. I got more than you. Oh, there's another one. Go ahead, Nancy, uh, explain uh, the rest of the room so I can. So now, um, just, just wonder, wonderful video. So now that, let's share what we know. So what, what's going to happen now, we're going to go into breakout room and we're going to be able to discuss what are the benefits of dramatic play and what could be the teacher's role in supporting dramatic play. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, we're going to go to, Breakout rooms, I'm gonna add the questions in the chat. I'm gonna add the two questions in the chat. So when we're in our breakout room, we were able to discuss. Yes, so we're going Here. to have about, um, about six, uh, seven, eight minutes. Just give me a second. And I'm going to Okay, I think we put ourselves also. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to open that.
Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to open the room. You will be automatically joined the room, all of you. Okay. So hi. Hi. Um, I didn't put it in a group. <laughs> let me. Let me. I was. Hi. 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 Good. How are you? I was going to to room four, and then it popped me back to the main room. Oh. Okay. Okay. Room four. Okay. Room four. I'll put it back to you. Okay. It will. It will go there. Nice to see you. Hey, Nancy, I bring you back. No, yes, I was part of it. I was just, you know, they were talking about um, the importance of, they're answering the questions and I came back. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I can, I, by mistake, I put you in a group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here, so let's make a plan right now. So, uh, do we start recording or? So right now is, do we start recording and then continue? No, the breakout room. Oh, yeah. Let me stop recording. Yes. Stop recording. I 